All right, so in the last video, I tried a clean version instead of the hand done kind of version. So let's look at the difference. Oops. <laughs> I'm losing my layers a little bit. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, I think I like I think I like the clean for the top, and then I'll have the more organic on the bottom. But I'm not finished with it yet. So this is just this is just good practice for you guys. When you're working, make duplicates of things you're not sure of, right? So under layer five, I've got melting. I need to unlock that too. And I'm going to duplicate that whole layer by hitting Command C and then making a new layer above it and then doing Edit Paste in Place, right? And then turning off and locking the older ones. So now I can edit it with impunity. And I think the first thing I want to do is create outlines on melting. So how do I do that? I right click and create outlines one one text group at a time and that changes it from just being one line in a layer to being a group of all the different letters here which makes them pretty easy to select too so now i'm going to take the m and i'm going to move that off to the side and down i'm still going to try to keep it clean so i'm using the guides that um illustrator is giving me i'm going to take the g i'm going to move it down to the side, try to line it up at the bottom, right? And then I can take all the middle, hold down Command, select multiples, and use the large selection tool to spread them out. Right? And then I can go back to the G and enlarge that, holding down Shift so it lines up with the top and bottom. And I can do that with the M, holding down shift so it lines up at the top and bottom. And maybe move it a little bit closer. Now what's the only problem is as I grew the M, I didn't get the tilt I wanted. So now, I'm going to try transforming it. So I select it, I hit, I sit, hit object, transform, and then I do shear because these are no longer type tools, so I can't use that type, you know, italicized tool. Now I have to play with previewing and shearing and playing with different angles. I gotta tell you the truth, I play with this, but I never really know what it's doing. <laughs> so transform, shear. Here we go. Okay, I don't want to do it that way. So again, you're playing with it, you're figuring it out, because they're vector shapes. Oh, this is what I need. I need the horizontal axis. No. What do I want? No. <laughs> I just undid. I just managed to undo my italics. So I want to do the opposite of that. There we go. Okay, I found it. Now I've got it lined up. Beautiful. All right. And then maybe I can do that for the G as well. It's a curve, so it's, it's not, the distortion isn't as noticeable. But object transform, it gives me a chance to show you this shear. It remembers my last setting. Yes, that looks better. Okay. What do we think? For clean type, does that work pretty well? I think so. And they are separated. I'm going to create outlines for this. But before I do that, while it's still a type tool, I might play with the option kerning a little bit, bring those letters a little bit closer together, maybe a little bit closer than I want them together, so that then I can use the large selection tool and grow them apart again <laughs> to get something a little bit more dynamic. 
I don't want them to line up with the edges necessarily. I'm going to enlarge them a little bit more. Nope, right there is good. All right, now I need to create outlines. So I select that whole group, right click, say create outlines. Now I have vectors. And what's nice about these clean modern fonts is they're not going to have so many wasted anchor points. They're not going to have little things that are wrong with them. I like that it's a mix of hard edges and curves and that the curves are all even. And this is considered modern type design, sans serif, not decorative, very clean. Okay, now I've got this all in one layer. It's all as vector shapes. Now I just need to place it with my illustration in a way I think looks best. And that looks pretty good. Here, let me just put it on the gray. Let me keep it up here. But if I look at my inspiration, this has a strong stroke to it. So the other benefit of creating outlines is you can give them the different versions. So I'm going to copy this whole layer and I'm going to do a stroke version. Lock it, go to the new layer, edit, paste in place. And now on all of those, I am going to give it, I'm going to swap it from a fill to a black stroke. And I'm going to make that stroke uniform and large. See how that looks. And that's going to change some of the spacing, especially for the, the word underneath. So let me take that group. Let me shrink it back down. And honestly, instead of measuring or using point scales or anything, it's just important to do it visually. So I'm going to bring that down to maybe a four point. I need to spread out the M a little bit. And so I can adjust the kerning just with, with manual tools here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I might move the N a little bit. And now we're just doing really tight adjustments. Now this is why um, hand, hand done and decorative text is a little bit easier. You're not going to sweat the little measurements as much. But when everything is clean, all of that seems to matter more. In fact, I want, might want to take that G and just tighten it up a little bit. Mm, nope, never mind. So individually adjusting, but now with a stroke. Now I have both versions. Remember, I want it just as black design now. I can always be changed to colors and fill later. So I have the stroke, and then I have without. What do you guys like better? Yeah, I think the stroke is a little bit more engaging, right? And then the last thing that this influence has, it has these kind of neon lights. It has something above and below that give it a standard. So I'm going to go ahead and add that with a new layer. And I'm going to use the rounded rectangle shape tool because this can be part of type design too. I'm going to start where that macabre M starts. I'm going to end where the macabre E ends. Oh no, I'll go into this a little bit. It's italicized. Okay. But I'm going to change that into a fill. Right. Then I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to paste it in place to get a duplicate. Then I'm going to use a large selection tool to move that down perfectly. And then I'm going to offset it. So this I will move to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 spots to the right. And this I will move 20 spots to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
40. Give it a little bit more space. And I'm realizing there's a, another good place for this. So I'm going to paste it again, move it up, and I'm going to use this to separate the two. Hold down shift, I can shrink the element a little bit. Stretch it out again. As long as I hold down shift, it shouldn't distort too much. Then I can take macabre. Move that down. So this is all the layout stuff, type layout in Illustrator. Get your own thing going on. And if you're not sure about it, make a lot of duplicates. So I kind of like that. Let me see. I don't think I need the one on top. Oops. Yeah, I don't think I need that one. Okay, now do we like that better? Let me move it off onto the gray. What do we think? Yeah, I think it helps separate the M's instead of having them lined up together. All right, so that type treatment is finished. And this is above my illustration. So before I do anything else, I'm going to turn off my illustration, only have um, the layers visible that are my black and white text. And I'm going to save it as an EPS. I can always save it as an AI file. I should probably save that as assignment eight vector type, black type. But I want to save it um, to the desktop as an EPS. And I do not need to preserve the links or embed the files. because I'm actually using outlines. I'm not using the, the typefaces, right? I used them to start with, but then I switched, okay? So now I can go back to Photoshop, open my poster layout, because this might change my ideas a little bit. Take this type that I just designed, there it is, as a black and white EPS, and drop it in as a smart layer from the desktop. Move it into where I think it might go. Space it out. I want it behind. Yeah, I like that. Behind my illustration a little bit. All right, so now, save that. Now I got to do the My Little Pony part. It's easier when you have influence, right? Now, in, in case I want options, and you're not, a, you're not a good professional if you don't have lots of options to give your client, I'm also going to take my other solution, my hand done solution. Gotta find it. <laughs> Huh, we've got melting there. Where's the other? <laughs> 